Welcome to uh, this podcast and video about tire pressures. Tire pressures are one of those things that are probably talked about the most around the campfire with four-wheel drivers and I'm argued about it a great deal as well. You know, when to let down pressures, or why to let down pressures. Uh, is a narrower tire better than a fat tire? Why is that the case? How does affect pressure affect that, etc, etc. I'm going to try and I'm going to try and put this in perspective and this is what I'm going to present now is actually for the more I think for the more advanced user because let me start way back my first tires were tubed when you reduced the pressure in a tubed tire now that actually has an inner tube uh, and that what that's what holds the air and the tire is what gives it its strength now of course with tubeless tires those two functions are built into one much much better much much better i know of one person who will watch this video who will disagree with me i'm sorry you know who you are you are you are in the dark ages the reason is this the moment i have a, uh, a, a, a an inner tube with a tire around it okay and i reduce the pressure as you reduce the tire pressure, they flex more as they rotate, which generates heat. That's why you don't run too high, go too fast with a low pressure, because it generates heat, and heat eventually gets to the point where it actually damages the tire. They just get too hot. And the rubber and the compounds in the rubber change their form and collapse and break. When, rubbing, when running on low pressures, and you've got all of this flex you have the tire flexing and you have the two flexing inside the tire the temperature acceleration is more than it's tenfold i remember times where i would have i'd have these blowouts and i would monitor the temperature of my tires and i had to keep them hard we, we would just keep them hard because if you let them down and you did you know 80 90 kilometers an hour on on corrugations they would get so hot and I learned you cannot let them down you let them down and they will blow a catastrophic heat blowout on an inner tube is quite easy to detect once you've taken the, the normally wrecked carcass of the tire off the rim the inner tube is just it just strips it's it's actually it's shattered it's almost like dropping a glass plate it it literally the rubber just shatters into hundreds of little pieces and that is classic heat blowout and on a tire when when it's running too hot and you, the te pressures are too low the sidewalls are the things that fail because they're the things that are flexing as the tire is rotating the flex the sidewalls doing the you know all the way around it's just and it generates a huge amount of heat in about 19 late 80s early 90s tubed tires started being brought uh, you know tube less tube less tires started being brought out in reasonable numbers and some good products i remember continental made an, a, an interesting tire they were a bit weak uh called a Con conti track uh general brought out a, was it the, I don't think it was the, called the Grabber then, but it was a pretty good tyre. I had them on my Land Rover. They were strong. They were tubeless. <laughs> and then, of course, with the tubeless tyres came along um, tyre repair, you know, the string-type plugs for temporary repairs. Uh, the BF Goodrich, um, first-generation KO2 all-terrain, came out followed by the mud terrain these are all tubeless tires all that was the next level of, of tech technical progress when it came to tires and a lot of people were left in the stone age um, still using um, still using tubes it is true that tubeless some tubed tires are extremely strong and they're easier to you know to to, to take off a rim because they're not holding the air as well so they're actually a little bit easier to service in the bush it is true i'll give you that and they are some are very very puncture resistant and some are very poor performers on road while quite good performers on gravel reasonable on gravel and very good in the bush very robust but 
modern tyres are just as robust. Uh, that advantage is gone with the modern tyres now. Um, you know, this far, 30 plus years on, where we've got tyres now that are just as strong as the old type tube tyres. So uh, unless, you travel, unless your vehicle is used 100% in bush, tubeless is the way to go. As far as I'm concerned, end of discussion. And if you think, and in fact, actually, even then, there are some tubed tyres, the tube list tyres. I'm sorry, I'm even getting this mixed up. Tube list tyres, modern tyres that are just as strong as the strongest um, tubed tyres of old. Noah on his ark, he was thinking about going tubeless because he realised that this. Anyway, I joke. So now we're sitting with modern tyres and we're getting great performance out of a lot of tyre brands now. Uh, really marvellous when it comes to performing well in both on and off-road scenarios. Now I've just, this tyre behind me is the BF Goodrich KM3 and I've just finished my time in the Victoria Highlands on the official launch and it will be available June this year, in, first in Australia and in the USA. Those are the first two countries where it'll be available. And this is a remarkable tyre when it comes to off-road performance. But it's an off-road tyre. Doesn't mean to say you can't use it on the road. It's going to be good on the road, but you're, there are going to be penalties. For example, if you expect a tyre to be great off-road, I mean, poor, top line, better than that, like this is, my guess is you're not going to get optimum mileage out of it. If you are looking for a tyre that is going to give you best, best mileage, then a tyre specifically built for off-road use is probably not going to be the best choice. So every tyre is a compromise. Now here's an interesting fact. The guys in Namibia that, use, uh, that drive land cruisers in very, very rough terrain um, and very soft terrain Dry, sand, 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 sand dunes, sand climbing, sand, and they, they're tour guides for people going into the sand seas of the Namib Desert. They use mud tires. Interesting, they use, they, they, they use BF Goodrich mud tires. And when I saw that, I asked them, why do you do that? He said, because these are the only tires that will give us 30 plus thousand kilometers, which isn't very much, is it? But remember, 100% of the time that tire is running, it is running at extremely low pressures. Not just lowish, very low. We're talking half a bar or, one point, or 0.7 bar their entire lives. And they were saying to me that performance on sand is as good as the others, good as the all terrains, but they last longer. So it's an interesting thing that not, it wasn't obvious to me that that might be the case. Driving extreme low pressures for long and they get the best mileage out of the, the KO2 mud terrain tyre. I find that very interesting. Let's get on a little bit about tyre pressures now. Before we daren't let tyre pressures down. The first book that I ever bought, 4x4 book, was by Jack Jackson. It was called The Four-Wheel Drive Book. It's a great book. He'd done a lot of, he was mad about Land Rovers. Well, he was a Land Rover user, series, mostly series Land Rovers, Afghanistan, Pakistan, places like that. And, oh man, this was, you know, he was my hero. And um, uh, it wasn't like today. He didn't have a Facebook page. Fa the internet barely, in fact, it didn't exist when I bought that book. Uh, but there was nothing, nothing, not a word in that book about tyre pressures. But about tyre repair, but about replacing, but about rims, but about uh, tyre choice, nothing about tyre pressure. Maybe it's because you pump them up to the operating pressure and that was it because they were tubed. And mucking about with tyre pressures like dropping them would cause tyre failures. It wasn't, you know, now as four-wheel drivers, we, we talk about tyre pressures all the time. We're con I, have a, I have a bone to pick with people that come on my channel and say, why are your tyre pressures so hard? 
Why? Were you, were you, were you there? I didn't see you there. Did, did you measure my pressures? How can you tell? By simply looking at a vehicle and saying, tire pressure's too hard. I want to hit them with something. That actually display to me, that actually displays abject ignorance when it comes to tire pressures. How do you know what tire pressures to run? Two ways. When you're experienced, you drive the vehicle over the soft terrain and you feel it and you make a judgment call. Second, you park the vehicle and you look at the tire. What does it look like? How much flex do you have in the sidewall? How much has the, streds, the tread spread? You look at it. If I'm out in the bush and I'm reinflating my tires, I don't get the pressure. I don't bother with the pressure gauge. I don't bother. I pump it up, I stand back, I pump it up, I stand back, and I pump it up and stand back and say, yeah, that's about right. I do it to all four wheels. The specific pressure is not the question. You know, what pressure, you know, I get a question. What pressures do you run on your trip carrier? Uh, how long is a piece of string? Anything from half a bar to 3.7 bar. I'm going to put the PSI uh, thing underneath the screens for, the, for those of you who are watching the podcast. Sorry about that. I'm st I still, my brain still works in bar. It has done mm, for my whole life. So it comes naturally to me. Um, so the point I'm making is it can be anything from very soft, half a bar, even I think the last I've ever driven um, it was a Land Crew. It was a, during the launch of a Toyota something. I can't remember. They had they called it the Toyota Armada, and we would go out under these beautiful places, and they would Toyota South Africa would 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 bring their entire range of four-wheel drive vehicles, and we go driving in these beautiful places. And I remember we were given instructions on this launch: um, you follow the track, you do not leave the track, you do not leave the track, you do not leave. It was, well, I was driving along and I had a, uh, I, I don't actually remember I drove that morning, but I remember the offending journalist decided he would, no four-wheel drive experience, I won't mention his name, very little four-wheel drive experience, charged off over this beautiful sand dune. You don't do that. These are pristine, they're protected. Anyway, the parks board went berserk and anyway, but and he drove into this hollow thinking he would be able to get out and the vehicle went <laughs> and just got bogged down. So I came up the hill and I saw that and there he was. He came running up and said, Andrew, Andrew, oh, God, oh, and he realized he'd me messed up. Please help me. And I went down and I dropped his tire pressures down to, uh, must have been 0.3 to 0.4 bar. It was really, really low. And there were tubeless tires as well. And I thought to myself, if I can just get this thing in and it's keep it in a straight line, because if you let the tire's pressures down and you turn, the, the force, the lateral forces on the sidewall can tear the tire off the rim and you lose air. So, um, I had, so I kept the steering wheel absolutely straight and I managed to crawl this thing in low first. Or in fact, I think I did in reverse. Yeah, I actually, I went up in reverse, whatever. So I saved this guy, he was very, very grateful. So I think that was the lowest pressures I've ever pump any of my tires. I remember a couple of times in my Land Rover, I, uh, my, my Defender, I went down very, very low uh, because of really, really thick sand conditions. So it depends on conditions, depends on, on, on lots and lots of things. In the old days, we couldn't do that. Now we can. Question is, when do we let them down and how much do we let them down to? There is no blanket answer. You should let your tire down to X because your tire will be different. It'll have a different type of sidewall. A three-ply sidewall will flex differently from a two-ply sidewall. You can see it. Two vehicles, similar weight, same pressures. You can see it with your eyes. And so you, you, you must, as the driver, make the judgment call. And the, so one of the best ways of doing that is, is looking at the tire. But for safety's sake, err on the higher pressure than the lower. Because remember, low pressures will damage the vehicle, could easily da damage the, the tire because they get too hot. I make it a regular occurrence. I do it all the time. Stop for a pee, stop for a lunch break, stop for a Coke, got one here, see? Uh, I just touch the tire. Just tells me if the, it tells me. I will do that particularly if I'm driving on gravel and it's rough. 
washboards and I've let the tires down, I must make sure that they're not getting too hot. Because if they're getting too hot, that means I've let them down too much for safety. They might be much more comfortable, but how are the tires going to fare? So what can happen is this. You're driving to a place, driving to a place where you're going to need really low pressures. So say you let them down to, I don't know, 1.8 bar. And you let them down because you want comfort. Now it's a hot day. You may have let them down a little bit too much, maybe at the back. Because often you've got more, more load at the back and less load at the front. So you're going to let them down a little bit more at the back and a little bit less, sorry, a little bit less at the back. But again, you look at the tires. They should look, the front tires should look similar to the back tires. They should have the same bend, similar bend look. You let them down and then you drive long distance, hot day. And you now touch. And if you can hold your hand comfortably on a tire, it's not too hot. If you, ah, it's too hot. If it's as hot, as a hot, hot, hot coffee mug, it's probably too hot. You have to pump them up again. They're flexing too much. The danger is if you don't do that, you dry the whole day, the tire actually, okay, let's say it doesn't damage the tire. How will you know if it hasn't damaged the tire? Maybe the tire is still on the rim and it's still holding its air, but you've actually damaged the sidewall because it's got too hot and it's starting to break because normally the breakages actually start on the inside, not the outside, normally. So because that's the tighter, it's the tighter uh, radius on the inside, slightly tighter, so it's getting slightly hotter, okay? And so it will break without you knowing it, okay? Look at your sidewall and if you see it's bumpy like this, you're starting to get separation on your sidewall, okay? It's one way of of looking at it but it's no sure way the only sure way is actually to take the the, the tire off the rim and actually put your hand inside and make sure that there are no sharp edges nothing's starting to break nothing's starting to do this kind of thing absolutely smooth and not rippled it must just have a very gentle ripple from the actual manufacturing of the casing it shouldn't have big it shouldn't have big curves in it at all so now you get into the, onto the beach or something like that and you've got to go down to really low pressure. Those sidewalls are just going to break apart. Before you know it, they are just going to break. Bang! And you can lose more than one tyre. You do that, you can lose more than one tyre. It wasn't long ago I came across... It was actually quite well publicised because there was a video crew doing something on a channel. Discovery 4 lost four tyres. Four? Four? You've, you've overflexed the sidewalls. How, how do you lose four tires? You can only lose five to four tires by running at two low pressures. So now let's talk about tire pressures and why they work. Why low tire pressures work off-road in part two.